eigenvalue feature number four, the trace. The trace is a feature that doesn't actually give away an eigenvalue in a corresponding eigenvector. But if all of the eigenvalues except one are already known, then the trace will give you the remaining eigenvalue. Here is how. It turns out that the sum of the eigenvalues equals the sum of the diagonal elements, highlighted here in yellow. And the sum of the diagonal elements is called the trace. Therefore, it can be said that the sum of the eigenvalues equals the trace. I actually have a slide that explains why that works, but maybe it's not so important right now, so let's move on to an example. Consider this example. It's very similar to an example that we considered when we were discussing non-trivial null space as a giveaway for eigenvalues. This matrix has all of the features of that matrix, but it's four by four. So let's go over its eigenvalues and eigenvectors. One of the eigenvalues is eight, because eight is the only non-zero entry in its column, and it's on the diagonal. Therefore, eight is an eigenvalue, and zero, one, zero, zero, is the corresponding eigenvector. Secondly, each row of this matrix adds up to 32. Therefore, 32 is an eigenvalue of this matrix, and 1, 1, 1, 1 is the corresponding eigenvector. The next feature is the non-trivial null space. You will notice that column 1 minus column 3 is 0, 16, 0, 0. In other words, it's twice the fourth column. Therefore, 1, negative 2, negative 1, 0 is in the null space, and it is therefore an eigenvector corresponding to the 0 eigenvalue. Thus, we have determined 3 out of the 4 eigenvalues, 8, 32, and 0. But the sum of all 4 eigenvalues is the trace, or 42. Therefore, the remaining eigenvalue must be 2. This is how the trace helps us determine the remaining eigenvalue when all but one of the eigenvalues has already been determined. Now, how do you find the corresponding eigenvector? Well, in this case, the eigenvector is determined by the routine procedure, which involves subtracting minus 2 from the diagonal, and then calculating the row reduced echelon form in order to determine the eigenvector. Here you see the row reduced echelon form of the resulting matrix, which tells us that the eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue 2 is minus 8, 22, 7, and 1. Let's consider a few more examples. This is now becoming really fun because we have a number of tools now at our disposal to determine the eigenvalues and sometimes the corresponding eigenvectors. For example, in the first 2 by 2 matrix, one of the eigenvalues is 4, because each row adds up to 4, the corresponding eigenvector being 1, 1. Therefore, from the trace feature, the remaining eigenvalue is minus 2. Let's look at the next matrix. One of the eigenvalues is 8, because 8 is alone in its column, and it is on the diagonal. Therefore, one of the eigenvalues is 8, the corresponding eigenvector being 1, 0, 0. The second eigenvector is 12. That is because each row has up to 12, making 12 an eigenvalue, and 1, 1, 1 the corresponding eigenvector. Now knowing two eigenvalues, we can determine the third one from the trace, and the third eigenvalue is negative 4. Now let's look at this matrix. This matrix was actually the one given as an example in the introduction. But now we're able to determine all of its eigenvalues and three of the four eigenvectors. One of the eigenvalues is six, because six is alone in its column, and it's on the diagonal. The next eigenvalue is zero, because this matrix is actually singular. You will notice that the second column is the average of first and third. So same feature in a different matrix. Therefore, the corresponding eigenvector is 1, negative 2, 1, 0. You will also notice that each row adds up to 10. Therefore, 10 is an eigenvalue, 
and 1, 1, 1, 1 is the corresponding eigenvector. We therefore have 3 out of the 4 eigenvalues, 6, 0, and 10. Therefore, the last eigenvalue can be determined from the trace, and it is 5. This concludes our discussion of the trace feature.